It's Sunday. Um, you're watching the Black Wall Project. As you know, every week we are on at 7 p.m. Now, I've actually been a bit remiss because a couple of broadcasts we didn't do. We didn't do just desserts to our people. So one show we missed. We did a show for X, but we didn't do a uh, Rest in Peace, Shock G, Pass, Black Rob, Pass, and we missed some of those. I know we got some and we might have missed some. I always want to get them all, though. So th this week, Shock G Pass. Shock G, Humpty Hump, Digital Underground. So before we get into this week's session real quick, I just want to do a quick rest in peace with Shock G. So folks, in, in memory of Shock G, do what you like. See all the guys and girls dancing out here now because everybody thinks COVID is over. Stay in place is over. People are out here moving around in these streets. So again, shout out to Shock G. He's, he's definitely a legend in the game. But tonight's episode is how to get a bag like rappers and ball players. How to get a bag like rappers and ball players. We got folks like Andre Iguodala, Dahani Jones, um, and so many more who are out here making money in investments, not just stocks, but venture capital investments and a little bit of private equity as well. But we're going to talk about that all tonight. But before we go any further, I want to say what's up to the Dream Team. How are y'all? Before we Here go any further, um, let's be friends. What's up, y'all? <laughs> good catch. Good catch. Jimmy, good catch. Why are you looking like that, Courtney? You don't know what's on I, I definitely missed the reference. Houdini. Houdini, Houdini let's be friends. That's a, that's a Houdini reference. But it's yes. Okay. Yes, because I said before we go any further, but you know, it, it don't matter. It don't yeah. Matter. Y'all know how yeah, that. that was part of a song. Yeah. <laughs> I got that. Thank you, Corey. Hey, listen, you know, you saved a little off. I start, I, I wanted to start from the beginning. <laughs> <laughs> I so hold on, y'all. Um, Malik Carter's back. Mr. David Ruffin was out the country for a minute. Two Carter. Yeah. Carter. Not out the country. Out the country. I was I was in Puerto Rico, not out the country. Listen, man, most of these Trump rights don't think that's part of the country. So we're gonna go true. with that logic. Since I was backstage and couldn't and couldn't comment on the y'all uh, Puerto Rico uh conversations, Puerto Rico is far from getting statehood. One and two, I will say that um Puerto Rico doesn't have a better benefit than than DC because they can't make their own deals. Everything they get has to go through the U.S. first. The U.S. put their tax on it before it comes to Puerto Rico. But um, so Just to give everybody, hold on, let's give everybody a little bit of context. We were talking about D.C. getting statehood, and I was saying that there have been some rumbles about Puerto Rico getting their statehood. Malik has been actually studying it because he's thinking about <laughs> getting some property down there. Mm. So he, he's our resident expert on Puerto Rico. Not, not yet. I will be, though. Not yet. Not yet. I will be. So how was the island? The island was shut down because of COVID. But uh, I had still had a good time though. <laughs> you know, everything everything was uh we got there, everything now listen, they take COVID serious. Like coming at the at the airport, you know, it's like it's like 12 monkeys, man. Everybody out there in they uh and they in their COVID suits, checking your checking your uh your test before if you don't if you, you don't have your test. You gotta get you gotta get back. You got where you came from. You can't leave the airport without you know saying your proof. But yeah, everything was closed at nine o'clock. Beaches were closed. Some beaches were closed, rather. You know, but uh, but other than that, you know, anytime I get away from Philadelphia, man, you know, get to some some sunlight, some sand, some salt water. I had a I had a cool time. Listen, man, I tell you one thing, man. The folks the folks will the folks be snitching on it, man. Like so, me and Corey was live one day, and somebody came in alive like. Yo, go to IG Live. Y'all man, y'all man Malik over there, drunk in Puerto Rico. Right? <laughs> yeah, right. right. So we, you know, we knew you, we knew your whole whereabouts. <laughs> we wasn't even, we wasn't even tracking you. <laughs> <laughs> Folks put it to the live. Like he over there on IG Live, drunk right now. I said, yeah, okay. I was, I was that little, mean he, he enjoyed himself. I was a little tipsy. I was a little tipsy for sure. All right, so listen, y'all. We need to take two because last week the whole show got jacked up. Well, not really jacked up, but we definitely got off our schedule, regularly scheduled program. Last week, we were supposed to be talking about balling and play. Excuse me. We were supposed to be talking about how to get to the bag like ballers and rappers. That got totally derailed. 
we wound up spending our whole show basically talking about Black Lives Matter and everything else that went on around that scenario. And interestingly enough, USA Today did a piece on that and they did a backstory piece, basically kind of fact checking the New York Post's post. And they said most of the stuff that they claimed in that article was unfounded. So I, I'm not surprised at all. And I think everybody on, on the uh, panel isn't surprised either. No, not at all. Yeah. Not at all. Real not quick, at before all. we get started, I do want to say one thing. And I probably won't say it a couple of times in the on course of this episode. But as you guys can see um, in my name right there, three ways for crypto.com. Um, you know, by the hood and the Ivy investor are coming together for a master class this upcoming Saturday. So, you know, you guys can, can definitely make sure you register at three ways for crypto.com. You know what I'm saying? Kamar, you got the, um, the flyer for that? Uh, somewhere. <laughs> somewhere. You, gotta, you just kind of threw it on me, but I'll get it. I'll get it before the night's out. That's, that's what she said. All right. I'm sorry. Go ahead. <laughs> <laughs> oh lord all right so let, let's check in with our folks before we go any further don johnson's in the building what's up Don? hey Don. adrian say how are you hey, hey monica hey monica yeah right let's try to stop you again, right? <laughs> how about that? one more game satoshi shay right did i get it right, right. right you got it right you got it right you got all right. right i know i messed it up last week so my bad I try not to make the same mistake, same the same mistake twice. Uh, hey, Rob, Robbie. Hey, y'all. Crystal, Crystal Willard. Hello. Let's get that bag. Say Renee. Hey, Sheree Adams. Hey, glad I was able to catch y'all. Absolutely glad you're here. Glad we were able to be caught. All right, uh, Courtney's in the comments as usual. Dan <laughs> <laughs> B. Hey, how you doing? Leaks it ain't no ain't no shame in my game, man. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Yo, yo. What's up, Dwight? How you doing? Wait a minute. It was Corey's birthday? Yeah, yeah. Yesterday, yesterday, man. Yesterday. Yeah. Oh, I missed that, brother. Happy born day. Happy anniversary. Yeah. Appreciate that. Thank you. I sent Corey uh, you know, some money for Bitcoin. Oh, See, you go. Um, okay. No, I, 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 I'm gonna tell you why. I'm gonna tell you why I shot the Corey. Corey started a giveaway in our group that went crazy where um he asked folks to like, you know, give some Bitcoin and honor his birthday. And our community is amazing. It was folks just giving away Bitcoin to each other in there. And, you know, so I thought that was pretty dope. <laughs> so, you know, shout out to all y'all in the community. I know y'all in there watching now. So shout out to all y'all. That's dope. That's dope. The uh, Bother University community is tight. Yeah. I actually enjoy y'all. Definitely. And shout out to Jimmy since we're doing our shout out. Jimmy, oh. I have a whole meltdown over my rehab. My rehab is in like the final <laughs> stages. And I like completely lost my stuff over a, like floors. Completely. Yeah. Like completely. That's and so Jimmy was there with the with the help and the assistance and the to talk her off the ledge. She was like uh old buddy on um, in Philly uh, you know, <laughs> hanging off the bridge and whatnot, you know. Just hanging. <laughs> yeah, I saw that. That was you saw that video? Yeah, now, the, yeah. The thing was crazy about that is because Philly is Philly. It's Philly, Philly. They, they, you know, you see the folks get out of their cars and just like start going in on them. <laughs> yeah, it was like <laughs> I, I didn't, I didn't get that one. I didn't get that one. Philly is a different animal, bro. We, we, we different we over are. there. Bro. We are. That's that we in Philly, honestly. What's but. up, Richard? Welcome, welcome, welcome to the Facebook user. Give us, give a uh, stream yard permission so we can know who you are. But your family, you too. Uh, yep. Happy birthday to Corey. Hey, Angela. Now, hey, Angela, Angela. y'all done, y'all done traumatized Angela so much. Angela, it's all love. It's all love. <laughs> and she makes sure she hit everybody. What's up, Jose? Uh, even if I got my final grades, no need to worry about statistics. I earned to see. All right. Oh, you got right. to see. Yeah, he was he was struggling with statistics for a minute. We trying. Yeah, to you did it. you did better than me, girl. You did better than me. Statistics was actually one of my better classes. Of course, it was. Yeah, the first time I took stat, I failed it. I had this. Wait a second, I was a philosophy major. Uh, Okay. The girls high though, so you know. You got it. Boom! I let you. Mm. Thank you, Jimmy. Don't put the battery in the back, please, 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 please. I'm I'm chilling. I'm chilling. (laughs) All right. So today's topic: ballers rapture. My fault. I don't, Courtney. Did you get that one too? No. 
today's topic self destruction. It's really not the black audience that's bugging. I can't make this up, y'all. <laughs> it's one or two suckers, ignorant brothers, trying to lie, rob, and steal from one another. You get caught in the mid, but the crush the stereotype here. All right, yes, that's we not, did. We're we gonna chill we, though. We got ourselves that together was another, that was so that we can unite and fight for what's right. Not negative cause the way we live <laughs> positive. We don't, don't kill our brothers. All right, we're gonna oh, chill though. Right. But no, that's a, that's another hip hop reference. That's not. All right, so listen. Jenny, thank you. So first of all, let me clear this whole situation up because y'all getting on my nerves. One, y'all are all older than I am. So a lot of the like hip hop references that you guys had that were of your time were not exactly. You were born time. during self destruction. You were born. That didn't mean I was listening to it. Like I mean, Corey, Corey, I was going to say the same thing. You would think we was on AERP and Social Security. No. Like- Courtney, like Courtney is twenty years younger than us, but you know, I like whatever. Where's Tyrone? I ain't talking to you no more about hip hop. Where's Tyrone at? Tyrone Where's Tyrone? Tyrone's <laughs> eating dinner. <laughs> Tell Tyrone to get on. We can talk hip hop with him. <laughs> All right, but listen, we're seeing a lot of people run that bag up, y'all. Nas, Andre Iguodala, Kevin Durant. I mean, there's a lot of people that made money off the Coinbase IPO. For the record, y'all know I hate IPOs, but and this specific area, I'm really proud to see that Nas and Kevin DeBrant got to the bag on the Coinbase IPO. That was great, but they didn't invest in IPO. They were pre-IPO investors. So tonight, we're going to talk all about this. So to anybody on the panel, is there anybody that really stands out in this game that you feel is really killing this in terms of investing? As far as an athlete or? Athlete, rapper, entertainer. No, like, well, I, I mentioned him a couple of two episodes back, but the dude, Rashawn Williams, he actually helped Nas found uh, Queen's Bitch Ventures, but now he has a MVP project, and he's been really educating a lot of athletes on getting into that space. I mean, like, one of the people, one of the people got in a couple of years ago already has three exits. Uh, he's a Morehouse man, and he actually teaches um, – a class at Morehouse on VC, and his page is is nothing but game. He gives he gives away all the game on on being a VC and all the exits, and there's some a lot of good stuff coming to shout to him. Now, is, he an ex, is he an ex player? He's not an ex player. He's not. Okay. But he's the person that helps all the ex players get into the game. Right. Right, right. Uh, and, and, and but that that he is young surprisingly is one of his main events. If that he is young, you know, I think I ever say his name again but at the Sixers, but yeah, no, man, dude is is making is getting money on that uh and that that, that pre IPO uh late stage investing. I mean, did, I think overall it just makes sense. There's a lot of folks in it. I thought Anthony Saylor was the guy that got uh the Queensbridge thing together though. Um, I, mean, I don't know. I don't know all the members of it, but he definitely was a, uh, a founder. Yeah, yeah. I mean, you got Troy Carter. You got a lot of people in the background. But then in terms of the in terms of the actual athletes, and entertainers like you know Swiss, of course, like you know Jay Z and Beyonce. Um, you know, I'm a member of the Beehive, so I got to give her a shout out. But um, <laughs> but there's so many folks. But I think that the conversations that are being had are changing that. It's just, it's just a part of our culture now, which is dope to see this become a part of our culture. But it actually makes sense when you think about like, you know, hip hop in general, that this will become part of the culture. And interestingly enough, um, I might be the only person in the planet who actually listened to Snoop's new album. Don't ask me why I did. But I the album, yeah, I might be. Me and Snoop are the only ones. But even listening to that album, the point is, um, somebody had the conversation. This is the same dude that made Doggy Style. Now he's talking about like, venture capital he's talking about investing in real estate i'm like hold up this is snoop dogg um you know I was, the music's not as good as it was when he was you know talking to ratchet stuff but the conversation is different you know what i'm saying i do want to say one thing he got one line where he talks about he about to open up a hundred thousand crispy creams and that's what you know snoop i did the research there are only a thousand crispy creams in existence so i don't know how you're going to get a hundred thousand but, <laughs> but, I, but, I, but, I, but i digress i digress anyway but the fact of the matter is like even his lyrical content at this point is is having different conversations than it was once in the past, and you see that with a lot of uh, a lot of uh, rappers and entertainers and even athletes. Like you talk about Kevin Durant, um, I've seen yeah. Kevin Durant in a lot of different spaces where he's talking venture capital, he's talking real estate investment. Like 
I, I've watched sports my entire life. The guys in the past weren't even having these conversations, nor could they sit at a table and have these conversations. You know, I, I've read like um, a lot of biographies in terms of NBA athletes, and they and a lot of them talk about, you know, I'm, they weren't even thinking about that kind of stuff because they were just solely focused on playing the sport and hiring other folks to handle that part of the um, the business for them. And a, a lot of them got screwed because of it. There's a lot of money lost. If you look if at we, someone like um, Kevin Garnett, Kevin Garnett lost millions of dollars. Yeah. Antoine Walker. Antoine like, Walker. He got murdered. Yeah, just hiring folks and just like, hey, take care of this while I will focus on just my craft. Um, but again, you, you stand on the shoulders of the people that come before you. So enough mistakes are being made, even as you start talking about owning your the rights to your music or your art. Those conversations are different. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, but if we gonna talk about you know athletes that, that that ran up a bag in business or in the market, we got to talk about Junior Bridgman. Got to talk about Junior. The, 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 you know what I mean? Like Junior Bridgman ran up a crazy bag, and Junior Bridgman was well, he, 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 got, he got one, he got one, Wendy's and what else? Yeah, he he owned like three hundred Wendy's, and he sold them all. He sold all of his Wendy's and he bought uh, a, a huge equity piece in Coca Cola bottle. So yeah, he, no longer, he no longer owns Wendy's. He owns like a, a, a huge portion of the Coca Cola bottling company and he has like the rights for some huge territory. Um, so that's where he is. So, yeah. Then, you know, we also got to talk about, you know, Magic Johnson and Emmett Smith, like players who've done it right. You know what I mean? Like who, who took their money. And ran up a big bag, you know what I mean? Like they 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 transitioned well from being a, a superstar athlete or or just an athlete period to doing major things in the business realm, you know what I mean? And so you know things that have been so noteworthy that people who or, or they wanted their business out there, you know, to let people know that they get into that bag, you know what I mean? So. And you know who I, who I like? I like uh, watching Chameleon there, man, because Chameleon yeah. there, Chameleon, he could have been like everybody else in Texas, you know, like pe- people don't realize that that Slim Thug and Mike Jones making millions of dollars in real estate. Like, yeah. people, people don't know that part about it, right? People are like, Mike Jones, who? But, um, yeah. <laughs> but no, Chameleon, but also Chameleon there bought Earl Stevens, a man, E40, into that, into that investing side. And, yep. they, and E40, don't quote me on this. I believe I watched the interview where E40 said he was an early investor in Clubhouse. And I think, um, I know for sure E40, he's, I believe he said he was an early investor in Clubhouse, which hopefully it'll pay off. <laughs> hopefully. These days, hopefully. hopefully. And by the way, I just want to say 281-330-8004. Yes, I still remember the number to this day. <laughs> I, just got, I just got to put that out there. Mike Jones. That, 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 he was, he was, he was a, Ahead of his time, Mike Jones. Ahead of his time, nobody was. It's great, it's great marketing because I still remember. Now everybody got got my community. Yeah, Mike Jones ahead of his time when it comes to that marketing. Insane. Yeah. Mark, marketing legend. But right Corey, Corey brought up something, and I looked it up real quick, and I thought this was dope because it seems like you know our community still struggles with the idea of making money and being an entrepreneur, and this overall capitalism in itself. But Corey just brought up Junior Bridgman, right? And if you look at this article I just showed. He brought Ebony Magazine for $14 million. Now, there's some other people, some other going interests that brought the rest of the Johnson um, brand. But look at what he was able to do to keep that brand going with $14 million out of, you know, all the I think they said he turned like $60 million into $600 million or something like that. It's something crazy. But this is some of the effects you could have when you step into the game of investing and making money in business ownership. Yeah, yeah. That's a, so, I, I wonder if that's a, like you know, I'm just wanting to know like, is, is, would you guys consider that a good purchase? Like, I guess does he get all the the history that comes with that? Like, and he know, get all that information. He get all that back information again. That's what I was wondering. Again, I don't know, but um, but the I would call it a good purchase for the culture. I can't say it's necessarily a good co- a good purchase for straight up business ROI. Okay, just being honest. Just being honest. I definitely disagree with that. I mean, there's a lot of history there that can be monetized, um, especially as we as a community become, I should say, as the United States becomes a little bit more, I'm going to say conscious because they're not conscious, but a little bit more interested in Black culture. 
Mm -hmm. I think, you know, you have the opportunity to really monetize and educate and more specifically educate us about us doing us. Because I think a lot of times we allow other people to tell our stories and it really puts us in a bad spot. I mean, we can see that by looking at the educational system is that they're teaching African, African American history and it's just not even factually correct. So again, I think when it comes to us talking about all of those things that um, historically have put us in a, in a good position, Ebony and Jet have really capitalized on that for years. So history does have a value. Is it gonna be a, a media ROI? Absolutely not. But I think in the long run, I think it's a great purchase. Well, I was just speaking from the perspective of where it's at now. I don't know mm -hmm. their business model. I think it's still all majority print. I'm not sure everything that they're doing digitally. So that's why I said, I don't know. Yeah, I was just asking, I, I, this is an interesting question to me, but I, I, I'm appreciative of um, Junior Bridgman for a lot of reasons. One being, when you read his story, he was so strategic in uh, how he moved. In the off season while playing in the NBA, he would work at Wendy's and literally work at the, the at the grunt level, at the bottom level, just to see how each part of the operation worked with the intent on becoming a franchisee upon retirement. So he had this whole thing thought out. So even while he was playing in the league in the off season, this is what he like spent his time doing. So um, and he worked his plan. Sounds like very similar to Andre Iguodala, Iguodala um, when he did his old internship during the lockout. So. I mean, they did that pre-work to make yeah. sure they can get in position to really maximize the positions that they got into. Yeah, but, you know, um, like somebody said in our comments, LeBron made it cool. You know what I mean? Like LeBron brought cool to it because he brought his whole team up. You know what I mean? Like he built, you know, he built a team around it. You know what I mean? So it's, it's different when you build a team around it because what LeBron did was something totally different. Like you see the individual athletes coming up, but he – Basically, his homie is the is the best agent in the game. Then he got another. Uh, the marketing arm is the best in the game with Maverick. Then, with Maverick Carter, and so you know what I mean. Like so, what he did was something totally outside the realm of it. And then he became an owner in in the, in the European Soccer Club. He became an owner, and you know, was part of the ownership group with the Boston Red Sox. So he's already in these spaces while he's still playing. He changed the whole set up and view of it you know what i mean but i think that like you know that's why i say we all stand on the shoulders of our ancestors because everybody that came before him a lot of them to do that yeah so he's just the next he's the evolution of that he's the next yeah the he's definitely that. that the evolution of when it. you look in the hip-hop space you talk about like you know i mean you go back as far as you want to whether we're talking about russell i know it's not cool to talk about russell these days but and you see the evolution of that like so it's all about um looking what folks are doing and then building on top of that. So you got to always give credit to the, to the right. folks that laid the foundation. And LeBron is just taking it to the next level. He's done what he's supposed to do. And he's done, I mean, done a great job of it too. In terms yeah. of your friends, you know, so. Like, you know, another person we don't talk about a lot is Dr. Dre, because, you know, he got his issues in the past, but he was one of those first, he was one of those pioneering people when he made the, the you know, beats with Dre. And then, you know, had to deal with Apple and, you know, made itself a, a nice little chunk of change and brought itself in billionaire status. So, you know, because he went from getting it to broke back to getting it. You know what I mean? Like he got as far as his finances, he got a real, you know, crazy story about how he, you know. I think I think the Dre, the Dre thing is a little different to me. And Courtney said something that I found amazing. Right. Um, which is this. Right. So. <laughs> She picked her head up, right? But yeah. no, but Dr. Dre, when you read the story from the business standpoint, like he really didn't get involved in any business. What he did was he became so great at his craft that things just came his way. And, you know, because initially he didn't even want to do that. He wanted to do a sneaker. And Jimmy Iovine says, no, you're Dr. Dre. You're so good at what you do musically. It makes more sense to sign your name on this. And he's like, all right, we'll go do it. You know what I mean? Like, it, <laughs> he wasn't really that involved. But the point is, he was so good at what he did in terms of his work that opportunities came. And he took, and here's, here's what Courtney's point was. You, he took that earned income, right, and turned that earned income into investment income, right? So when we talk about these athletes and entertainers, that's a part of the play is they're taking income they earn from their quote unquote job and turning and are building empires upon that income. So that's how it applies to the everyday person. 
Like whether you, you know, work for the water department or whether you do whatever you do, you have that earned income. Now, how can you do the same thing that athletes and entertainers do in terms of taking that earned income and building something else? Well, I think that, Jimmy, that's a really good point. And, I, and thank you for the for the love. But I think um, one of the things is important to mention is that, you know, these um, athletes and um, entertainers are able to get into the pre IPO spaces. They're able to kind of take advantage of these things that before they get to market is because they're accredited investors and uh, and just understanding what an accredited investor is. Um, there's two ways to become an accredited investor. One is that you have income. Your income, if you are single, I believe is 200000 for the last two years with the reasonable expectation that you'll make it in this year. And if you're married, then it's, it's 300000 between you. Same kind of idea. Or that you have a net worth of over a million dollars. So, so many entertainers and athletes kind of have made that money, have gotten to that threshold. But I think it takes a different type of mindset to pivot that earned income to actually put yourself in a better position to get into these things on the ground floor, because that's really where the money is made. But a lot of people assume that every time um, they get into an investment, a, a IPO, a pre-IPO, um, kind of a startup, that they're always going to make money. But the thing is, is that, you know, they invest in a whole bunch of them and then a couple of them turn around and then you have something like Ring or you have something like, um, like Uber, you have those things that kind of really pop and people in Coinbase and people get really excited, but they're like, oh my goodness, look at them. They they got into this investment, but it's like, yeah, they got into this investment and probably 10 others and not right. maybe all of them actually popped. But I think yeah. if you have that cushion of that earned income to really protect yourself so you can take the riskier bets. These are true. And as an yeah. incredible investor, boy, you get all kinds of stuff thrown at you. Yeah. So I got a question for y'all. I know there's a couple of uh, pre-IPO apps out there. Mm -hmm. have, have they waived the um, accredited investor um, entry for a those? Couple of them have. I think they're using that. Um, the there is the uh, what is it? It's a reg. It's it's allows no, it's them to get in. Right. Now, what, what I will say is this, right? <clears throat> there's still levels. So even when you're using those apps, there's a certain level that you get to as a credit and investor where you get access to still other stuff. So you'll have stuff that you can get into without being one. But once you're an accredited and investor, that's when you know you get a you get a special email link. Like come look at this stuff. Yeah. Right. And, and I'll tell you one thing, boys, an accredited investor, you get and that's another thing. It's also you get a lot of people take the approach of throw enough stuff up against the wall and see what sticks. But you know, it's also um a skill set in that too. Cause the stuff you get pitched like Yo, someone sent me a thing to invest in a Negro League team in 2021. They're trying to bring back the Negro League. <laughs> and I'm like, that, that's just one example. I can probably give you about 50 examples of some of the crazy stuff that came across my desk. But it's like, so it's a skill set in picking those things, too. But um, to answer your question, Okamari, there's there's like the group, but then there's like the group group. If that makes any sense. Yeah, so it's Reg, um, so I think we have a T-share that is like Reg D. It's Reg D. Um, that's it. Funding. That allows people to get in, um, depending on kind of I think how much like what their net worth is, they're allowed to get in a little bit, kind of like dip their toe in, but not anything that's um, massive. That because when you're a credit investor, there's no cap, but when you're a non-credit investor, you may be able to get it, get some kind of exp exposure, but it's nothing like Jimmy said. You don't get kind of the full experience. You get like a little tablespoon. Right. So, let me just hit real quick. So for Sean Williams, let me just give you a list of some of the companies that. He got his athletes and real fast. Run them down. Uh, including also Nas too. Ring, Pill Pack, Pluto TV, Robin Hood, Coinbase, DraftKings, Turo, Airbnb, Zen Water, and No Bull. I don't know what No Bull is. But that list of investments, that's an insane uh, list of investments that they jumped into. Like, that's, that's, a, that's a hell of a list of, um, of, of startups. Yeah, yeah I, I was pulling up um, some of the stuff for Nas. And like you said, a lot of the stuff that Nas and Bashar have co-invested in is here on the list. You know, Pluto TV acquired by Viacom for $350 million. Pill Pack acquired by Amazon for $1 billion. Ring acquired by Amazon for $1 billion. Dropbox, jeez, I didn't realize Dropbox was that, uh, that much. And this is probably old, $1.3 billion. Genius valued at $1 billion. Lyft valued at $23 that's IPO since this came out. Yeah. And um C C B. Yeah. And so yeah, Nas Nas has made a tidy little sum. 
<laughs> yo, genius being valued at one billion is like, yeah. <laughs> anyway, yo, shout out to uh, Pocket Watch and JT because I, <laughs> I went to his channel and he got that video um, that he broke down um, with the, with the pastors in Atlanta, you know, and then bringing the, those financial experts in. I told you that was a good one, right? Yeah, that was a good one. I was dying laughing though. So shout out to Pocket <laughs> Watching with JT. Yo. I, I, I bang with his channel. I definitely subscribe. Yep, yep. Shout out to JT. Hey, um, Jimmy. By the way, JT came on yesterday while me and Jose was on. Shout out to Jose for rocking with me yesterday. And JT dropped another super chat on. Me, so appreciate the brother. Oh, so you try, you know, see, you look trying to drop another super chat. I would drop one right now, but I can't because I'm on here with you, man. <laughs> I'm no, all, listen, man, you know it's all love. By the way, shout out to you, Jimmy, and you, Corey, for re-releasing that uh that episode we did a while ago. I just took a clip from it. You know what I'm saying? I'm trying, I'm trying to get like you on YouTube, man. Like, yo, you, you, you Kamari killed it on YouTube right now. So we know nah, we're to get you, bro. Listen, I ain't yeah. killing it. JT is killing it. JT about the Latin me and everybody else. He over there monetized. He's doing a thing. He doing a thing thing. Shout out to all the black creators. Shout out to all the black creators, man. Yo, oh, I will say that though. We all do have to link together and support one another. So yeah. what's your what's your you love to say this, Jimmy? Black creators matter. That's right. <laughs> they do. Black they do. You know, yeah, we gotta take that YouTube income and you know what I'm saying, take that over to Republic or something. <laughs> yeah, how about that. I will say this though, right? Back on topic. I love the I Am Athlete podcast. Okay. With Brandon Marshall. I mean, those brothers yeah. really are showing what you can do after the game is done. I mean, there's a lot of athletes doing that, though, yeah. right? Yeah. You got the, yeah. uh, what's the point of the boys that smoke the, uh, the, the, the basketball? All that smoke. All that smoke. All that smoke. Yeah. You got the, oh, all yeah. that smoke podcast with, with, with um, Matt Barnes and, um, and Stack Five. Yep. And Stack yep. Five. You know what I mean? So that's that's dope. Then you got, uh you know, kind of Gilly John. You know, Gilly is one of the top entertainers. In that space, and then you got Joe Button. So they're 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 taking what they did and flipping it too. They're just putting it into a different space. So you know, as far yeah, as we're talking about, about investing, though, right? So I don't, and this is no no shots because I I do enjoy um, Joe Buttons, and I do enjoy Gilly. So Button, not the S. You said Buttons. It is no S. I, no I, S. I, I assume he was in my Buttons show. We'll go but, ahead. I only bring yes. it up that, that was a thing when this album first came out. His first album flopped, and they kind of blamed it on the fact that people were looking for the buttons with the S for the really buttons. <laughs> <laughs> that was like a that was a big thing back then. That was. That was. Listen, that I'm, was a Joe, a I'm a Joe Buttons fan. He's a phenomenal rapper, but he doesn't have what it takes, in my opinion, to be whoa top five. No, because it's more to just lyrics. Oh, you're like, talking about as a rapper. I, I think yeah, as a rapper. Oh, yeah, as, well, as, as a rapper. No. I I th- I think, yeah, I think what he's doing is dope. I think what he's doing is dope. It's funny, you know, as another as another segue, right? We're talking about black podcasters. Did anybody see Drink Champs when Maskos was on there? And he I said, heard that was one of the better ones. I didn't watch it yet, but I heard that was actually one of the better ones, which is. But he said, who would not be in my top five would be Joe Buttons. Yeah. And I got it. I got it. So. And I'm a Buttons fan. I'm a Buttons fan. Yeah. But again, I like the uh, I Am Athlete um, podcast real good. They'll bring in wealth managers. They'll talk about some of their deals. They'll talk about some of their ordeals. I think it's great. Along with all the other podcasts that uh, Corey. I, I, I do. I do want to say this though. I don't want. I don't want you to shortchange uh, Gilly because it, it is shortchanging. I mean, what you said it's not about the talking about ownership and business, right? Well, I don't know all this business, right? So anytime we're talking about something, I can go off of what's public knowledge. I'm not trying to say they're not investing. Like, I'm a big Wallow fan. Like, what that brother has done in the last 24 months from coming home yeah. is nothing short of phenomenal. Yeah, so sure. I'm just saying I can only talk about what's public. That's all. No, this. No, not. I don't want. Listen, I don't want no smoke with Gilly at all. No, no. No, but I, I think I think that I think that as a, as a creative, what they created is amazing too, right? So I think this is all part of our overall conversation, though. When we talk about black creatives, okay? Because, because again, you know, it, it says entertainers and athletes, right? So even even as Corey said, those people that are taking their their you know quote unquote fame and then flipping it into something else, that is important. Reinventing themselves, but now, like, what do you do to take that to the next level? And um, so I think black creatives kind of fall into this conversation to talk about entertainers and athletes. That's why I thought the whole idea of earned income. And then like being able to take that earned income 
and then go somewhere else with it is important. But to Courtney's point, when you have a lot of earned income, you kind of have that like insurance, so to speak. So I'll be honest, when I thought about it, I really thought about the cats who are actually prominently doing it. That's why I keep talking about Iguodala, Kevin Durant, Nas. Yeah, so again, it wasn't it wasn't about this and Gilly and um well no, 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 I wasn't saying it was a dis per se. I was saying they talk about ownership. They do. They do. They talk about owning business and, and owning owning yourself, right? Old owning all your brands. You know, and I, and I believe Gilly is an owner in Danny's and also, I've also I think he's an owner in that uh that that home health care agency also. Mm-hmm. Well, if he is, that's dope. That's smart. I thought they were just paid paid sponsorships. And, and that's the thing, though. So the thing is, ownership, right, as, as a conversation is a part of this, because although we're talking about venture capital, it's bigger than that. That's why that's why that's I was right. talking. That's why I was talking about like just the conversations that are happening, not only in the music, but just in general. When you see these podcasts and you see these folks talking, it's it's like different conversations, even as it pertains to owning your music. Right. We talked a couple uh show well, probably you know, a couple months ago about um uh, who was it? Sam Cooke we were talking about in terms of owning his music oh, and came about in terms of the, uh, that, that show. And it was kind of at the time when you watched that uh, that uh, movie, it was like he was an outlier because he was talking about ownership. Mm-hmm. Yeah. But now he wouldn't be an outlier in today's climate. This is like a normal conversation. That's a, that's a conversation that, that, you know, not that other people didn't do it, but Prince and Michael Jackson, right? And so that, that that's a... That, they were prominent. They were up front talking about ownership of their music and of their catalogs, and especially Prince. Prince wouldn't even work with artists that didn't control their own catalog. And they tried to paint him out to be like just eccentric and crazy. When like now, the stuff that he was saying now makes like perfect sense to mm-hmm. people in that same space. Yeah. He, like, he would he ask that, everybody right? that wanted to work with him did they control their own catalog because he wanted them to have control of their music, and if 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 they ever did something. Right. But if we want to go back, right, you brought up Sam Cooke, which is a great example. You also have to talk about James Brown. I'm Ray Charles. Charles. You also talk about Ray Charles. That was the very next one. So ownership, yeah. I think, is in our blood. Entrepreneurship is in our blood. A lot of times we're afraid of it because of various conditions so, and rationales. But I think a lot of it's in us naturally. So now this is that has to be the next progression in what we're talking about with venture capital. That's the to me, that just that's the next the next logical step. As you talk, talk about these things of ownership. Um, you know, is is getting into venture Just to buy into our own company, to like uh, uh, you know black owned companies. Like, so we're investing in these IPO companies. The next progressive step would for us to be able to do that to like direct list like uh, Coinbase did. Like, don't even go through an IPO. They just paid their investors right out front. Like, if you look at what Coinbase did, a lot of the investors put on their perspectives that they were coming out soon as that soon as it hit the market. They put that they was coming out the market. You know what I mean? So they got paid out already. They took a portion, like the boy who had the biggest uh, percentage, he, he cashed out 40% of his shares. And so he already been paid out. So that's, a, you know, that's that's another thing that we got to start getting into. We got to get, you know, like like uh, Dr. Paul said, man, we got to take money from all the communities and bring it back to ours. So, so that's what I was going to ask. You saying the next step after after getting the venture capital. So what's the next step for us overall is to take our own companies direct. Is that what you're saying? Yep. And get that money, get that worldwide money. You know what I mean? Like, because my thing is, if if they can get all that worldwide money, we should be able to get that worldwide. Oh, what do y'all guys think about that? What is the next? I disagree. Step? I disagree. I would say. I'm I'm gonna, gonna, they're gonna go push ahead. back a little bit, Corey. They're about to push back a little bit. And you don't, don't, you don't want to think- give up that ownership stake. No, 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 no. So I think you make a very valid point about creating mass ownership, but I don't think that the stock market is the place for us. Because if you look at, and I think Mari talked about this yesterday, if you look at some of the black owned companies that are in the stock market and you look at their financials vis-a-vis other companies, they're still not getting the um, the recognition in the marketplace that they should be. So if you go direct, if you go through a direct listing, one of the things, so when you go through an IPO process, you have your underwriters like basically kind of drumming up business for your for your listing. But with a direct listing, you have no drumming up. And then on top of that is that you have with your underwriters, they they are basically kind of creating a 
I guess for lack of a better, like a floor for you. So they basically kind of do pipe, they do price stabilization. So if you go public without, or you do a direct listing without having that kind of support behind you with your underwriters, you can, it can definitely fall flat. You have no support and companies that are strong, like a Coinbase and a couple others that have done this direct listing, they were able to do that. But you actually, a lot of other companies really do need that support. Um, I mean, look at Uber and and um, Lyft. If they went public, if they went direct to a direct listing, they would have just kind of yeah. fallen apart because they were trash companies in terms of their financials. <laughs> Facts. Yeah. So I would say next step for us is the first step, right? I mean, we're talking about Nas investing, Kevin Durant investing, Magic investing, but we still don't do the basics, y'all. And that's not hate. That's just the facts. That's what the data tells us. Well, data well, tells us that only 2% of black folks support black business, spend money with black business. Okay. So, so out of that $1.4 trillion that we generate every year, only 2% of that is going into black folks' pockets. The rest is all leaving our community. So when you say first step, that's what you mean. Just basically support black people. Yeah, business. get, yeah. get, back, get, get okay. back to the base. Yeah. So, I mean, obviously, right, I don't have a problem with, with the stock market. I mean, I will say this, right, for the record, I think the stock market is, is glitz and glamorous and it's flashy and it's sexy. And so people will gravitate to that more. But some of it is just the basic building blocks of any community, of any, of any. Um, own the business. How about this? Own the businesses in your community. Right. So if you right. don't own the businesses in your community, you don't own your community. Correct. Because once we once we do that, right, once we really solidify our community in terms of economics and finance and business, we'll be able to fund a whole lot more stuff. And then we can do the more fancier VC deals. We can do the more. I mean, some of the the reg D and reg A stuff Courtney was bringing up before allows for a lot of that allows for the crowdfunding that we should be taking advantage of. But. Many of us aren't there yet. We just not I mean, there. Yeah, you got a you got a shout out to um, Chris Sending Golf and the uh, Buy Back the Block website. He he raised like what, a million dollars for his project, and now he's scaling up to some other bigger stuff. So there's opportunities out out there for crowd investments and for places for us to go to people that are raising money legitimately, like with, with legitimate projects and real projects. You yeah, say that legitimate part again since JT is in the building. <laughs> <laughs> because I was going to say, we, we tried the crowdfunding mm -hmm. thing before. Oh, right. boy. No, y'all no, are, are right. shady, man. But no. I think we have a really, we have, we are a community that is very community based. Whenever a somebody makes a rallying call in terms of, hey, I need help, we've been doing that for years. And as, if it wasn't, um, if it wasn't with crowdfunding, it was a dollar party. It was a rent party. I mean, so we yeah. are very community based. So it's about, I think a lot of times we look, we try to kind of mimic what other communities are doing. But I think the important thing is actually using the good and the amazing things that we do in our community and kind of just taking it up a notch. Because I think that's that's essentially like, I'm just so frustrated how we, we always like look to other communities and say, why can't we be like them? It's like, why can't we just be more like us? Yeah, I mean, it's just so, it's frustrating. Hmm? So we should so we should help sis pay off her PPP loan. <laughs> no, <laughs> leave it to Jimmy. Sis, leave it to Jimmy. Help you. <laughs> Yo, that whole thing. I, I'll be honest. That whole thing really scam. Because I don't know anytime because they said they need money to feed our kids, but you're talking about the government. I don't think the government really really came after you just yet. But that's just my thoughts. Yeah, I mean, you know, man, it's a whole lot with that. It's a whole lot with that. It's a whole, it's a whole lot with the loans and, and, and folks realizing now that oh, the government wasn't playing. They weren't. Yeah, playing. They weren't. Now, here's the, now here's the thing that gets me really frustrated is that the government is usually very slow to act, extremely slow to act, and now all of a sudden y'all y'all fast, we're quick, fast, in a hurry in the middle of a panorama. Like, stop it! <laughs> ourselves. So you're telling me that you can be fast when you want to, when you feel like it. So don't like, oh, government, you know, government runs slow. Like, no, y'all run slow because you feel like it. It's like that little kid that's always in the back of the pack, and one day, like, you see them just take off, and you're like, what are you doing? Like, I thought you couldn't run them. Like, I didn't feel like it. Hey, listen, you know, when they take, came time to get them checks out there, they did that with no, they've been telling us for years that one of the reasons they couldn't do reparations is because, like, you know, um, the logistics of getting the money into the people's hands. <laughs> when, when that pandemic hit, they got them checks in people's hands, like, you know, quick, fast, in a hurry. Because those people was they, those people. That's Don't why. Worry. 
Plug vision ain't blurry. I'm sorry. But go ahead, go ahead, though, Kamari. What's your next point, good brother? <laughs> you caught that. So, like, I, I, yeah, I caught it. I caught okay. it. All right. Hey, um, hey, listen, I, I, are, we, are we talking about crowdfunding? I apologize. Kamari, I, t- I sent you an a, a email. If you don't, if you can look at it and share it. Um, Should I raise you know, that now nah, listen. One of one of my one of my great friends, and actually, I think Corey and uh, Jimmy, you might know her, but uh, you know Safa Hania. Yeah, I donated to. I I do. I, yeah, I went. We went to school with Safa. Yeah, yeah. So Kamar, if you don't mind, you know, sharing that in the group, she's uh. Put it in the chat, Malik. Put it in the in the chat. Of course, we'll share. All right, I, I do that. But yeah, like I said, she's you know she's, she's um struggling right now with 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 her cancer. It's not really looking that looking that great, and she's really uh falling falling behind financially, man. So. Definitely want to. I want to bring some awareness yeah. to her situation. I definitely donated already and, 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 and put it up. Yeah, I yeah. Just, so y'all know we all about the folks. We community first. So Malik, that's a that's a non starter, yeah. bro. Yeah, yeah, Safa, yeah. Safa, she's she's good, folks, man. Yeah. Like I've never I've never seen her had have, have a bad day. I've seen, her, I've seen her have plenty of bad days. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, I'm just talking about as far as you know. You know, we went to school. You know, you, you get what side of people you get, but you know, she was always positive. Is what I was trying to say. Gotcha. You know, what I mean, like, not that she didn't have bad days because no, there's no perfect people. But yeah. you know, she the thing she does, she does with a smile and she does with an open heart. And she never, you know, what I mean, I've I've never seen her not do things that if it, if it, if it, if her heart could, you know, do it, she would do it. You know what I mean? So. That's what I was saying. Not not that she was a perfect. Yeah, yeah, you know, for sure. All right, so listen, real quick, intermission while we're waiting on Malik to put that in the chat. There's been a whole lot of chatter going around, right? About who could beat Jodeci in versus. Uh-huh. Well, what? Boys the man. Oh, man. Is it new edition? Is it high five? I want to hear what y'all got to say. So right. I, I know, I I know Jimmy's got comments on this. I, you already I know. Saw Mark's, I saw Mark's God. Go ahead, go ahead, though. Go ahead. Real quick, yeah, I saw I saw Mark's post about that, and just they they are in a league of their own. You can't put new new edition boys and men. They are not even no, like they over there. They're all icons. 20, with 20, 20 songs, boys and men might be able to keep up. Me, not even what? really. Not even really you, with twenty songs with, with twenty songs. Keep up with ho ho You saying Jodeci is the favorite against boys and men? Yeah, I would. I, I would I take said. Jodeci and, and with twenty songs, I would take Jodeci as the favorite. Never, never, not even close. Not even close. Here's the thing. First of all, my sleep. Monica, man. Y'all gonna, y'all gonna laugh me out of the room when I say I, I, Monica just said it because I was gonna say that we had this conversation. I actually think that Drew Hill will watch Jodeci, but what? what? I but, mean, but, I think, I think oh, Jodeci, but, Okay, I guess you. But but hold on though. I think that twenty boys songs. Men, I think Boys and Men a new edition. We shouldn't even be having this conversation. Boys and Men a new edition. Are at a, a level by themselves. Like Jodeci can't mess with New Edition. You New Edition dope, can man. have a versus against Listen, I'm, I'm from Philly, and Jodeci was the soundtrack to my damn existence, no. dog. Hold up, though. Listen, New Edition got Bobby Brown's catalog, right? They got they got BBD's catalog. They got New Edition's catalog. They got yeah, Johnny yeah, Gill's yeah, catalog. Yeah, 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 yeah. Put them over there because they can. They can. Yeah, they got. Versus Jodeci doesn't have 20 songs. Y'all going y'all, y'all, y'all crazy, Listen, man. And what right, I'm saying is, on, because on, I've done on, the on. research, I went and listened. I'm like, I, in my head, in my head, I'm like, yo, Jodeci or Washington. But when I went to listen, I was like, I actually like Drew Hill's music better. But I, just being honest. I'm just being honest. I'm with you. So, yes, hold I agree with you, Jimmy. I agree with you. Real quick, real quick. I just wanted to share this for context. Just for context. Right? So this, convers- this conversation has actually been circulating for a long time and i've been having this debate with folks for a long time not about verses but who's better joe to see versus boys the men and then very smart brother his real name is damon young i want to say but now he's panama jackson if anybody's familiar with very smart brother on the route he writes very sarcastic snarky funny kind of commentary on all kinds of stuff and that's who was on mark lamont hill um, interview uh, or show that Malik was talking about. So he put out an article and I was expecting it to be a little bit more punched up, but it wasn't. By the way, The Root is a black I, 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 real quick, so I, Can I correct you real quick? Um, Damian Young and Panama Jackson are two different people. They were, a partnership, they were a partnership that created Very Smart. They are the two Very Smart brothers. Oh, they are the two. All right. Thank you. Yeah, thank so you. they created that in partnership. So they're two different folks. Thank you, Jimmy. 
So, you know, it, it's, it's been mentioned. So I figured I'd bring it in to the folks. So I'm interested to know, what do y'all think? <laughs> Wait, Lorenzo, Lorenzo oh, says, no, 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 no. something's wrong. Lorenzo, you're too young, God. Seven yeah, strong? yeah, something's wrong Yo, with you, listen, I'm, 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 I'm not aging. What I'll say is this. They may got more than seven, but when you really get down to it, see, the thing is, Jodeci probably got like 10 songs that are just undeniable. But when you get past that 10, it starts to get a little shaky, though. Like, a little shaky. It gets a little shaky. Oh, I'm man. just being honest. Yo, yo, yo. It's, don't it's, be it's, disrespect, it's, it's just man. that those 10, oh, those 10 are so hell, But man. here's what I will say. I would like to see them at a versus just to see, like, them in the room. Like, you know. <laughs> <laughs> crackhead <laughs> Joseph. You want to see Crackhead no, Joseph? I say that respectfully, but I would love to see them in the room. First of all, they might be fighting. Respectfully. That's not yeah, respectful. I'm just saying, I would like to see them in the room. You know what I mean? You know, but but we start talking about boys the men. They are not on the level of boys the men, though, bro. I'm disappointed in you for saying that, man. Like, hey, listen, man. You I'm, 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 I'm going to tell you. Outside like, of being when, 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 when you said, when you when you broke down New Edition, they can't mess with New Edition. New Edition got like 75 songs. They would probably New Edition take a dump. Album before, before different decades. It's not even really. It's not even Yeah, close. yeah. New Edition. New Edition. Yeah, it, new edition yeah. let's, let's leave New Edition out of this because New Edition would probably take a dump on it. Not probably, yeah. most likely. But, but also, but for, but for 20 songs, but for 20 oh, songs. Man, talking about End of the Road, Water Runs Dry. Like, come on, man. Like, yo. I, a, but you I know what? I'm I will tell like, you this. But, but at the at the end of a Boys and Men routine, I would be asleep. Listen, the songs are the songs are amazing. But they're just, they're bollies. I might want to hear bollies. Well, here, here's where I disagree with you, Malik. If Boys and Men actually perform those, I think you'd be entertained. Yeah, they definitely have more talent in terms of singing than Jodeci. Listen, I just yeah. like now that. I get what that means. Who, who, who would can... be more entertaining to watch on a versus perform? Because it might be a train wreck, but we be at home laughing. Like... <laughs> <laughs> yeah, well, hey, hey, hey. So, Malik, did you did you get that post in the chat yet? I, I think I put. I, I believe so. I believe so. Uh, Man, I, I, hit, I, I hit the button. Look at it. Y'all gonna kill me, and, and, and my wife knows this already, but I might low key take high five over Joseph. That's either here or there, though. But, high five. but listen, high five got a lot of bangers. See, we're no, listen, high five versus, versus true, but not Jodeci. High five and true, yeah. High five, high, I'm, 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 a, I'm a low key high five stand, but that's either here or there. Like, you know, nah, high five, high I just five. Put that is, out, I just put that out. Let's, I'll bang let's, with back, I'll bang with let's get back to the people. Track. Let's get back to the people. I'm yo. sorry. I'm sorry. So, so everybody, y'all put in the chat who do y'all think will win? Jodeci. Boys the men, high five. Malik just said troop. I don't know about troop. No, but not no, against troop. No, no. I said troop versus high five. Yo, oh. troop only got like four songs that you can yeah, play. Man, like, yeah, high five yeah. Watch them. That's three yo body bag. Elizabeth, by the way, that's Corey. Not all of us caping for Jodeci <laughs> and Rick and Philly. That is not all of us. That is Corey. Leave me out of that. That's Corey. I think that's ass of ten. No, but you know what? You know what? I gotta I'm gonna keep that's it. Ass of nine. A lot, of, a lot of people rock with Corey. On it. a lot of people feel. I know they do. I know they do. But I'm not. It's not that boys the men. He's not the minority. It's not that boys the men isn't a great group. But when you talk about the soundtrack, like Jodeci yeah, was the soundtrack. Listen, but Jodeci was the. With Jodeci sure. was the panty proper soundtrack. You're about three songs though. When you go listen to the album, no, 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 I'm not. Listen, I bought. Listen, I hey, both, hey, both Jimmy, I'm Corey. from the same. We're from the same generation. I know that. Corey was listening to Jodeci when he was in Miami, a couple of the Miami nights. That's I understand it. that, but listen, go back and listen to it. Half of every album is garbage off the rip because they got a bunch of like up tempo stuff that's just not slapping like that. Like it's not good. So if, right, you go back, so if you go back and listen to it, it's like they got those great, great songs, but eh. All right, so hold on. Let's let's jump back into the comments. Let's not ignore our folks. All right, all right. Courtney said. Yeah, Courtney, we always trying to get us together real quick. Um, you ain't got, yeah, they missed mm -hmm. that. Yeah, I caught you. I, I see, Rich, know what it is. That was self destruction. All right, hey, Elizabeth. Um, so, who joined the real estate team in, in AC? Oh, in AC, okay. And I believe DJ Envy and Caesar. Yeah, so DJ Envy and Caesar are definitely getting to it. Yeah. Um, Don Johnson says ball players these days are using the game to build capital, truly changing the family tree. Absolutely. Yeah, yeah. Vinny Johnson owns a successful auto parts company. Uh oh. Yeah, he got with um Dave Bing. Bing. Yeah, he got with Dave Bing and um Junior Bridgman. That oh. they helped him start it up. That's dope. That's dope. Am I a sprint? Okay, yeah, we read that earlier. 
He can't rap otherwise. He's cool. Mike Jones. Mike yeah. Jones. I'm not familiar. Three three oh. I think okay. someone's yeah, familiar. Man. I think she's talking about the billionaire. No, she was talking about Mike Jones. Mike Jones. <laughs> Mike Jones okay. yeah. Jamal Mas. Oh yeah, Jamal Masburn does have a bunch of franchises. Yes, yep. he does. Yes, he does. Yep. Andre Sanders says I'm from South. Juicy J is a legend. Yeah, I saw an interview where he buys and flips homes in Tennessee. Early investor in Core Water Fortnite. Ooh. Oh wow, I didn't know that. Yeah. Before. Yeah, Robin Hood happened. A few others didn't know that. Didn't know that. Yeah, Juicy J getting to a bag. <laughs> the wife says, "Why are any of these brothers and sisters entertainers who are winning not out front, modeling well for generations?" They are. I think yeah, some they of are. them are. They out front. I think some of them are. But here's the thing, right? Everybody's going to be different. Everybody, like Corey and Jimmy, talk about this a lot, right? Everybody going to talk about their stuff um, and what they're doing because of just how we've been conditioned. If you can read between the lines on that, yeah, one. And, 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 but I think a lot of them are though. Like even when you talk about LeBron and them, they got a whole show needing the dough, like where that's yeah. what they do. Yeah, they bring, the dough, they yeah. bring on their friends. They bring on their friends that are in those spaces and have those conversations. So right, I mean, and and then even right now, like if we could just say like like Nipsey Hussle. I was not a Nipsey Hussle fan. I, I listened. To, I listened to his music until he started talking about cryptocurrency. After I heard him talk about cryptocurrency and business, and thought, okay, let me go hear the music now. You know, so I think they are leading yeah. in a way. Yeah, a lot of them are. A lot of them are. But here's the thing, right? We have a, a wide ranging of ages in here. The demographic is pretty broad. A lot of us are cued into different things. And so a lot of times our stuff, black stuff, right? Black investment accomplishments don't make mainstream news. Doesn't right. make the radio. So, you know, you always have to factor that in. That's why the Black Wall Project is so important because we're trying to make sure we highlight those things. Yeah, and y'all put me down with stuff. I didn't know Juicy J was a, um, I knew he was an investor, but I didn't know about Fortnite. And we, we do yeah. got, uh, you know, Courtney already told us we old and wise, so we definitely got different ages in here. So, Brian Lucky <laughs> may be the most powerful athlete with will ever, we will ever see. Clutch Sports is a monster. Yeah, I mean, I think LeBron will definitely, when it's all said and done, be up there with Ali. With less mud on his name, too. Yeah. So yeah. less white mud. So I think I think Sean was opening up business. Oh. Keyshawn Johnson. I'm not sure. Yeah. I think Keyshawn Johnson. Yeah. So yeah, I'm seeing Antonio Eubanks. I know that show broke from um by the university. That's, that's Eubanks, that's right. Yeah, yeah exactly. he, he is in here dropping bars. There's a couple of joints I put up there. That's, that's what he do, man. That's that's what he do, man. There, was, there was there was there was some joints he dropped in there. So and, he, and what he said is true. Your gift will make room for you. That's why a lot of times, like you gotta if you if you become an, uh, an expert at what it is you do, yeah. like you can find opportunities. And people will find you. People will come at like. When you're just doing the work, people will find you. I that's how I got on CNBC. I didn't know. I was just writing about 401ks because I like 401ks. So wait a minute, wait a minute. Courtney, can you say oh, that? Oh yeah, 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 yeah. Say that again. When I was on CNBC, say that again. Tell me about a stunt. Tell me about a stunt. So nationally. <laughs> so I said, um, when you do the work that that you're called to do, you just get pulled out of anywhere. I mean, I got a call from CNBC, and they're like, "Yo, we want to feature you on a retirement segment." Um, and I was like, okay. And I did it. And interesting enough, I did it like in February. I didn't know when it was coming. I didn't know if it was coming. So when I landed, um, in Charlotte from the Bahamas in March, I got a message saying that, yo, you're on CNBC. And I was like, for real? And I looked and I was like, oh shoot, I'm on CNBC. Um, you didn't say I did, shoot. I did say shoot. Todd was there. Tyrone was there. He gave out for me. Um, cause we were at both at the Charlotte right. airport. <laughs> <laughs> What's up, Ty? I see you in the chat, bro. All right. Um, again, past the Eubanks, we are supposed That's to be true. Oh, and Bars. 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 Let, yeah, Bars. let the church say. Yeah, that, those are bars right there. Thank let you, the Pat, church man. say. Spacks. Oh, are you yeah, talking man. about Sean Johnson with Spacks? Special no, no, no. He was talking about accredited investors. They get it. They get access to the well, special purpose acquisition companies. They do go public. We've had a couple of them. We had one that went through the marrow in uh, the cannabis space um, yeah. maybe about a year and a half ago. It was um, M Tech. It was basically the back office for um, cannabis companies, um, kind of their tagging in HR system. So they do a lot. I think they've got a little out of hand with it though. They do. Um, I'm, I'm, waiting for, uh, I'm waiting for SoFi right now. I'm sitting on uh, more than I should be of a uh, SoFi. So. I'm just, you know, yeah. I'm Lord Lordtown and SoFi is the two specs that I'm listen. 
It's so far, so far, so far, are, are we dropping plays now? Oh, no, 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 no. I just, we just talk about what we do. We just talk about what we do. We just talk about what we do. I heard it. That, that is not a you heard, you heard it too, right? Oh. I heard it. I heard yeah, it at all. And I'm here for it. If so far it does well, I may disappear for a little while. But go ahead, though. I'm sorry. All right. So, JT said, great point about Reg D crowdfunding. Jose said, thank you to Roby, Robbie. There's an app called Republic. Mm -hmm. I invest in Gumroad. Yeah. You can invest in Gumroad. Oh, yeah, I do. Yeah. I do. And they and they actually they limit. Well, the thing is, Gumroad limit the amount of uh, each individual investor. So I think the only you can go up to a thousand bucks, and they blocked you off because they wanted to kind of like get the community to own Gumroad. Um, like so, but it was put in there. So you know, I'm you know a disclaimer. I'm an okay. owner as well. More plays, more plays. I hope y'all take play. it. That is not investment advice. This is not investment advice. You know, past performance is not indicative of future Did performance. You, you know, you can contact your own tax um, tax investment or um, legal professional regarding your own particular situation. That's yeah. right. For educational and entertainment purposes only. That's right. Yeah. What's up, <laughs> How you doing? Welcome. All right. So Elizabeth says at this point, if we aren't talking about ownership so we can control our narrative financially and culturally, what are, what we, are doing? we doing? I, I, exactly. I, agree. I agree. Another bar drop. Elizabeth okay. is a bar dropper too. Yep. Yes, she is. Elizabeth going to write that book before it's all over with. We got her in the past. Hey, listen, if Elizabeth going to write a book, we're going to go back to all the shows and like put a book together for her based on her comments. Back. Yeah, I'm with it. All right. Elizabeth says we have to make taps, taps on about it. <laughs> Mm -hmm. Rap song. I know she was saying rap song. All uh, right. If you don't own the doors in your community, you don't have a community. You have a neighborhood. I agree. Yeah, Shoot, yeah. I don't know. We got either one these days, though, but we can talk about that another day. Neighborhoods are not hoods. Nobody's neighbors, just animals reacting with that animal. Be up, my fault. <laughs> All right. So Elizabeth says, so to be honest, a few recent conversations I've had, a lot of black folk, particularly millennials, don't want to own anything. For them, it's too much stress for them. And it's sad because we keep working for other people. And a lot of us are comfortable there, but ownership, folk are tired. So I think so, I think that's a valid point, but I think that speaks more to the mental health of many of our black millennials. Yeah. And we gotta we have to do a better job at bridging the gap between old and young or elder and young, um, whatever you want to say. So we can be support systems monetarily. And just a shoulder to lean on and give some guidance because I know, and I think this happens every generation, but many of the millennials really feel like they're alone out here. I'm I'm, I'm the only millennial on the show. Hi. Hi. Ooh. Wait a minute, wait a minute. All right, all right. All three of y'all, Corey, Malik, and no, Jim, I'm no, no, no. We 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 Gen X. We Gen X. Oh, okay. Yeah. I, what are you, a boomer? Well, wait a minute. <laughs> but wait a minute, isn't Tracy younger than you? So she's a no, Tracy is not younger than me. No, she is. Oh, okay. All right. <laughs> but yeah, yeah. but yeah, y'all yeah. but, but wait a minute. Y'all just saw the point of what I said about the generational gaps, right? And she basically just besmirched my age group. Um, <laughs> she I was called a, him a boomer, though. She called you I'll a, boomer. a boomer, right? Yeah, <laughs> I'm extra, right? That's cool. Cool. But my my point is is that listen, I think one of the things is is that millennials have a lot of debt from college. I mean, we were all told to go to school, and if you go to school, you get a good job, blah blah blah, because all of our parents are boomers, and that's what they were told. They didn't know anything different, and it actually worked out well for them. But in the interim, the game changed. I remember having a specific conversation with my father, and we just got into it. Um, imagine like. I get all of my like feistiness from my father. So just imagine that conversation. So and he's a central grad. So ho oh, oh, ho, watch what you say to that man. <laughs> so I, I share that to say Shut he was up. saying when he went to Penn State, he went to Penn State and he was working free jobs there to pay his bill. And I'm like, that was impossible for me in undergrad. I couldn't work any amount of jobs to pay my my tuition bill. I just couldn't. It wasn't going to work. So I thought that was just a very interesting kind of gap that we were having. So a lot of them don't even understand the massive amount of school debt that a lot of millennials have. And then on top of that, the boomers won't retire. So the way that we were trying to, that we assumed we will be able to ascend in the workplace is not happening because they're not retiring. 
for whatever reason. I don't know if they're bored, they don't have enough money, I'm not sure, that's not my concern, but it is a real issue that's happening. Second of all, housing prices are astronomical. Like compare, my parents purchased a house for like $60,000 in 1984. That same house is about 400, 450, something like that. Just, you, you, you can't even, and now my parents were making that with six figures, six figures of income. That's what they purchased with six figures of income. Now, granted, they, they had to put down 20%, but the game was completely changed. Mm -hmm. Like you can't do that now. And I think, uh, and so you look at kind of what you should be doing as a millennial, we're told, like I said, we still have the idea of get a good job, buy a house, you know, retire, get some kids and get childcare is expensive as all heck. So everything that we try to do is super expensive. And then we're not making money. And then they want to tell us they're not saving, they're not saving us from our student loans. Um, it's just, it's a lot to take on in terms of really trying to put yourself in a position like, oh, I'm going to do ownership. Now, one of the things that I have seen a lot of millennials do and be successful at it is this, is that they remove themselves out of the marketplace and they create their own marketplace on the Internet. And that's where the difference is. I mean, a lot of people talk about sales. Sales is actually where you make your money, hands down. But nobody ever talks about that. And it doesn't matter what you're selling. Well, it doesn't matter to a certain extent. No it doesn't matter what you're selling specifically. It's just the fact that you have sales and you're able to create your own income and create your own infrastructure. But that's not what we were told. We were told to do these, you know, paper pushing jobs, be an attorney, be a blah, blah, blah. I mean, some of the attorneys, like when I was working for directly for the government, I didn't make any money at all, like zero. It was great opportunity. But again, I wasn't making money that was that made sense for my life. So it's the boomers' fault. It's Kamari and all his boomer friends. Uh, they're yeah. hogging up all. The, they're hogging up all the resources. Y'all, do y'all see this? They're hogging listen, up all the resources. I'm gonna take this disrespect, and we're gonna funnel that energy into something a bit more positive. <laughs> all right. So Malik and uh, Corey, can y'all talk about this a little bit deeper? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, like I said, so so Safa, she is a um a, a single a single parent, you know, and um, I said she been struck. I I didn't even know. That she was struggling right now um, with this, but actually, I've been knowing probably Safa since 1982, 1993 ish, you know. And uh, like I said, she's really struggling financially, trying to get treatment and pay for rent and pay for everything else. And um, that cash app right there is actually to her mom. I don't, I still went to the cash app because I know go to her mom, you know. I don't, I, I rather the cash app rather than do the uh, GoFundMe. I, I didn't know that was her mom because I, I was looking at. I was like, I don't. I didn't recognize that as her mom. So. Oh yeah, yeah, that's, that's her. That's her mom. All right, well then, yeah, I'm a cash app too because I because I, I I said I did the go the GoFundMe because I didn't recognize that as her mom. Oh yeah, yeah. Sure. can one of y'all put the cash app in the chat for me, please? It's right there. It's a is cash is a h w e. Yeah, but put it in the chat for me so everybody can get it. <laughs> All right, yeah. So so um, you know. It's, it's a tough man. Um, battling cancer, and, and because of that, uh, she's trying to raise funds for chemotherapy. So you know, we all trying to help out. Yeah, so, absolutely. That's how you speak to America, right? Like, well, you know, it's mm -hmm. you get sick, it could send your whole life into a tailspin. Yeah, yeah man. man, it's crazy. I, I agree. It's, yeah, it's, absolutely. It's rough. I, I will be very transparent. My mom has to go through a second round of chemo. Twelve hundred. It's twenty two hundred dollars a month. Yeah. That's not covered by insurance. We're going to make it do what it do, though. Absolutely. But, um, it, it's real, to Malik's point, it really speaks to um, the sad state of America that we're not able to take care of. I mean, I think one of the ultimate measures of a community and a society is its ability to take care of its elders and its children. And we mm -hmm. fall down on both fronts. Yes, we do. Facts. All right, Courtney's on here preaching tonight, y'all. Yeah, she was. She's in her bag. We let her go. You know, yeah. talking about our boomers. Even even though you know she's besmirching my name, I'm just gonna let it go. But it's, it's all good. <laughs> it's, it's all good. Yeah. Well, yeah. Um, Jamal uh, said, I "I'm late in, but what about Chameleonaire? We talked about Chameleonaire and Sir Mix a Lot. We did not talk about Sir Mix a Lot, and I think Sir Mix a Lot is another one because I believe he owns all his masters." So he's getting a lot of that royalty and publishing money. Oh man, I didn't know that because his songs yeah. are like extremely popular, um, yeah. in terms of like pop culture and commercials and things of that nature. I, I didn't. I was about to ask you guys like, what is Sir Mix a Lot been doing? 
Because I didn't know that. My posse yeah. is on Broadway. <laughs> so um, I shared the seven streams of income in our group chat on Facebook, just so I think it's something that we should talk about. Um, yeah. yeah. That's what uh, Jimmy alluded to it. We haven't really talked about, talked about it. I gave you a, I gave you a propers. You did. No, no, no. I mean, I just think it's a conversation because I think there's that that myth that the average millionaire has seven streams of income. And it's like, well, no, they they may have seven streams of income, but that's not how they got their millionaire. They started income. with one. They, right. got, they got good at something. Right. Real good at something. And then right. they diversified out. And I think that's just something that I've seen a lot of people. They're like, yeah, I'm going to have seven jobs. Huh? How? No, that doesn't it's not it doesn't work like that. All right, so Adrian says, I wish we could get a huge piece of the hair care industry or reinvent with new products that we create our own. We can, right? But one of the missing ingredients of the cake, of the pie, is unity, right? Yeah, and so, we got to buy from each other. Right. I mean, so we, the, the Asian folks will smack our folks around, will talk crazy to us, and we will still go back and buy from them. That yaki goes on sale. So I don't know. I don't know what to say to that. Who's buying yaki? Come on. <laughs> <laughs> there's people still buying yaki, Courtney. No, there's not, Kamari. Yes, there is. Somebody I, listen, Courtney, please Courtney. tell Kamari that nobody's buying that yaki no more. Please. <laughs> maybe, <laughs> maybe, maybe, listen, maybe in the upscale neighborhood that you're in, they don't buy yaki, but where some of my people's are, they buy yaki. Next, next. I don't even know what yaki I'm is. I'm sorry before you all right. Yo, yo. But look, this, 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 this is not my ministry right here. Uh, right. <laughs> Corey and I did a whole business plan to take over the black hair care. Uh, yeah, we did. <laughs> y'all gonna share it? I mean, y'all gonna share the plan or what? I mean, it, we, yeah, we, we, you know, we never gonna do it, but but ultimately, you know, you you, you damn near got to set up training and franchises in a way, like really. I mean, it's very similar to what uh, what's my man from uh, North Carolina did. Um, Dag, what is his name? Somebody help me out. The brother, he, he ruled hair care for a long time. Even the bride with, with, with the pink one? Dudley's? Dudley's, thank you, Mr. Dudley. Um, he, he he made a mad run in health in hair care. Um, I even got an opportunity in a meeting one time. I had dinner with him. Um okay. Okay. very, very smart brother. Did you use some of oh. these hair products on your head? Is that what happened? Oh, oh, oh. man. Oh, oh, oh. oh. man. Y'all see, y'all see, y'all see this. So for the for the record, I think this is cyberbullying. Um, I need somebody to report according to the. I'm snitching, so I'm going to report according to the Facebook police. Hey. Oh man, I don't know who you're talking right, so about. Like, only Dudley, I, know, I don't know Dudley from different strokes. That's the only Dudley I know. Or the Dudley boys. It a, I don't it's know. a yellow. I think it's a yellow container. That all their stuff is yellow. Yeah. Okay. Man, oh man, y'all going to besmirch the legend. No, no, I'm, just, I'm just not familiar with. I'm not familiar. Oh, I know. With I'm, I'm joking. I'm joking when I say that. You didn't use it for your Corona curls, Jimmy. I'm disappointed. No, no. Oh, no. I'm from the hood. Always use, 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 use a pink moisturizer, man. Pink moisturizer, man. Like, you know, you know. Nothing but juices and berries. <laughs> wow. But all right. So Elizabeth says me me talking about real estate investing for a lot of my peers is still a huge no. Also, folks don't want to own business because they feel overwhelmed by LLC Twitter. I like that's what they be out of hand, though. I ain't gonna lie to you. Out of pocket. Yeah, I've been way out of pocket, of it, but they be taking yes. it way too far, y'all. Yes, too far. I, I would agree. I would agree. But <laughs> listen, that's why me and Courtney are here. That's why we do unlocking the tax code so we can help more people. Yeah, man. start businesses because yeah, man. again, we are not into this this job shaming thing because that's something that really drives me crazy too. However, if you really have that drive and you want to do a business, go for it. Go for yeah. it. Just educate yourself from real people, from real educational sources. And I will say the only people worse than LLC Twitter are like Rock Nation Brunch Twitter. They're even worse than LLC Twitter. <laughs> what? Yeah. Who are they? Oh, it's they like have they, all they, commentary. They yeah, all they're, commentary. They're, they're an offshoot of LLC Twitter, but they also like to be seen and, and you know, um, yes. do a lot of uh, flashy stuff. Interesting. All right, so Robbie says they can they can never make me think there is not enough money for reparations for the descendants of formerly enslaved people. I agree. Super fact. Facts. Facts. They have it. They well, have yeah. it. Research. They just they, they literally just showed us they could do it if they wanted to. They choose not to. That's a that's a definite choice. But the bill would be way higher than the one point three trillion. 
It would, but that's not. But here's the problem: they've gotten more than one point whatever trillion of value. They've extracted value and not once actually paid for it. There's no argument. I ain't arguing that. I'm not Listen, arguing. Man, they got money for wars, but can't feed the poor. I mean, Facts. That's Tupac. Ah, yeah. okay, okay. Oh. okay. Courtney no, like one for eight. Courtney like one for eight tonight. Don't do that to me. Why not shoot her down? I was excited she caught one. You know what I'm saying? Like, All, right. <laughs> All right. So Elizabeth says America has been playing in our face for years. We need to cut them off. Yeah, yeah we do. We do. All right. So boys the men easily. All right. Uh, Clearly. I agree. No debate. My, Monica. That's Monica's not, right though. No, Monica's yeah. not. Yes, she is. Got like I, two want, I want you. Listen, listen. We can actually have a playlist battle. We can do it ourselves. Like we can come on here on, on StreamYard and I'll play Drew Hill, you play Jodeci, and I'm gonna watch you. All right. No, no I'm, you I'm not gonna right. watch me. You're I'm not, not gonna watch me. Though. We're not That's doing not that. Gonna you know why we're not doing that? Because we don't want no trademark infringement. This is true. I, I, I don't need y'all on Facebook jail. I need y'all to come in. <laughs> you record me, slander me every Sunday like y'all love to do. Hey, listen, I'm allowed to slander you. I donate I donate to your campaign, so I'm allowed to slander you. Yeah, okay. All right. Wait. Boys and men. Ooh. Okay. We got a lot of people. All right. Lorenzo. Okay. Kappa 86. I'm choosing. Okay. Okay. As you, well, should. As, you, as you should. Have y'all seen what's happening with Harry's books? No. No. What's happening, no, what's happening with Harry's I'm not familiar with that either. All right. Can some... Don, let us know in the comments. Don, Don, let us know. What's going on with Harry's? Why he, why he, 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 Donald let us know. Uh, come on, Donald put us down. What's going on? He will, and you know what? Drew Hill was with DMX. That's it. I mean, he do got that song with X. Like that's a that's a dub right there. So technically, Drew Hill was not with DMX. Cisco was. Cisco with was, but listen, I bet you get all his catalog too. No, you it was Drew Hill. Hill. It was completely. It was Drew Hill. It was Drew. No, it was Cisco, but it was mind. Drew Hill. Yeah, but I sorry, I got you, Jimmy. Jimmy, you're right. Okay, perverses, okay. perverses. Perverses, you get all that. You right. Know what I'm I get you. You get incomplete. You know what I'm saying? You get thong song. I'm, I'm just saying. All right. Monica says uh, it uh, doesn't have 20. I don't know. I think they do, but. Yo, okay. yo, 20? Are you serious? Yo, send, me, send me a, a playlist for 20 Jodeci songs. <laughs> oh, I, want any, I want anybody to send me a playlist for 20 Jodeci songs. So hold on. Adrian's choosing violence. <laughs> I mean, <laughs> don't he sober? I mean, that's that's a good question though. You have to know. I think I think uh, Casey is doing better, y'all. So prayers out. Well, and that's good. And that's I mean, I think honestly, like being very serious about that is that a lot of our artists don't reach their potential and their greatness because they are afflicted with addiction. Yep, and that addiction usually is a cause of some kind of other pain that they're trying to mask. So. Or the music comes out fire and the business comes out trash because of the addiction. That's true. The music can you, come out super fire. But then you also have music execs that actually know that of their artists and they actually feed the beast, too. Yeah. So There's another level of exploitation that we're, we're dealing with. Listen, all y'all right. <laughs> Shout out to the DMV. Uh, okay. Only thing I see about Harry is she's opened another bookstore in Collinswood called Ida's. That's uh, oh, that, she, but, she, that's dope. Yeah, yeah but I think she. Well, he was saying she's looking for donations. Mm, okay. To, to help her move. I mean. I agree. I, I agree. Mean, this condition has a lot of I wouldn't say so. I wouldn't say so, but I'm make condition. Sure. But so, make, make condition I, got make condition listen. got a large catalog. I'm Yo, not who's, the, uh, who's the lead singer of make condition? Is it Carrie? Stokely. Stokely. Stokely is a is that the same era? Same genre? So I think Jonas is trying to look at it. Yeah, it is. It's all same era, same man. Yeah, they all in the same game. I mean, what kind of man would I be if I didn't say mint condition would be? <laughs> oh, okay, Jimmy with the remix. Yeah. Yo. Tony, oh, Tony, Tony, Tony. Man, listen, Tony. I like that one. I like mint condition versus Tony, Tony, Tony. That's a good matchup. That's a actually, great that's, that's actually one of my playlists on title, by the way. So if anybody got a title, I can send y'all that playlist. It's a combination right. of mint condition. I see the end of that. Yo, Lizzie, 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 don't say y'all. It was take Corey. Only North 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 Carolina. Carolina. Oh, the the commentary of the commentary of Corey Camp is, is, is long and does not mine, reflect mine alone. Those, and I stand, on, I stand on that. 
And I just realized something too. Malika's put it. I forgot Malika's like a half a Carolinian, so that's like that's that's a cheat code because that's where ain't that where Jersey from, right? Yeah, yeah for Charlotte, right? Yeah. Okay, yeah. So I see, I see what's going on. No, listen, look, clearly, no boys and men. Let me, I stopped liking boys and men when they kicked Mike out because he got MS. I was, I, I was that's not really why. Not what happened. That's the that's the that's 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 that. They said he couldn't bad. dance no more. And no. They, said, they said he wouldn't show up. He would not got MS. He wouldn't show up. He got MS. No, 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 no. There was a lot more to that story. That, that is not true. That is not exactly what happened. Adrian, you're out of pocket, too. You're not going to sit here and slander high five on, on Beyonce's internet. That's what you're not going to do. <laughs> 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 Your hockey fan, Tony Thompson. Your wife just dimed you out here. I yeah. listen. He's a legend. He's a legend. He's gonna get his too. He is. He is. I mean, you got hard to get. Yeah, you know I mean, I like the way. I can't wait another minute. Quality time. How many name? How many songs you want me to name? Because I can yeah. go about a good thirty. Yeah, yeah. Oh, thirty the, bags. The man, the man got the, yeah. We gonna say they got two songs. Like I would agree. I would agree a little. Yeah. How far? How far? I've got a nice catalog. Ooh, one twelve. One twelve. Yeah, they 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 so, are, they are all right. So first things first. Right, hold on. First things first. Everybody say hello to Samuel. He just Hi, Samuel. Yeah. They, already, they already got washed in the verses though. They they got washed by uh jagged edge. So. Yeah, they did. Yeah, but I all love right. one twelve. I'm a fan of one twelve. Like I'm a big big one twelve fan. But I just don't don't think. They, they, they don't have enough songs. Hey, listen, because they, they got they got the bad boy wash. Every time I call my chicks back in college, Cupid was playing in the background. I mean, I like, you know, like, give me one, two of them, man. I didn't, I didn't peep that. That was a double flex that Courtney did. Because not only was she talking about CNBC, she said, when yeah. I landed in the Bahamas, I found that I was on CNBC. Like, yeah. 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 A double I flex. Caught I caught it. I, I caught didn't catch it. that one. Thank you, Elizabeth. Black excellence. Black excellence. All no, right. Man. Run that disclaimer on those plays. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely. Yeah, I miss I miss I did home. too, Adrian. I was so annoyed. They yeah, got to be closed. Yep. Are they transferable? Because I know Jimmy and Corey got in. What's this? Is it something I'm missing? I don't know how to pronounce like, it. Like a millennial. Like millennial. Oh, millennial. She's, a, she's a tweener. She's a tweener. Got you. Got you. Got you. Yeah, Don, you see that, right? <laughs> and she said she calls me my her friend, but clearly, clearly there's some other things going on. I'm, I'm gonna have to call my therapist after the session. <laughs> yeah, the way y'all beat up on me normally, no. no it's Courtney, crazy not even right. here. Right, Courtney, actually, you get taken it easy on. Everybody else gets it way worse than you. Stop it. Stop it. Control is just as, if not at times, more powerful than ownership. Facts. Correct. Fact. Agreed. But control is the is the level up from ownership, though. There and you I go. Think it people is. try to get that. And here's the thing. Twitter LLC messes up control and ownership all the time. Yeah, so, they don't have because they, they don't they don't control anything. They own a lot of stuff. They don't control. Right. Anything. Yo, yeah. shout out to Lorenzo, man, because Lorenzo another yeah, central, yeah, another, 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 another central grad in the comments. But yeah, you know. shout out to central grad. I'm, I'm yeah. both. Both, both for that. For that, I'm both. Yes, you are. You are. Thanks, yeah. man. And all we right. love you, Corey. Facts: The games have changed. Yeah. Um, she preaching right now. Courtney always. Yeah. We're going to get her a robe and a big old hat. The I have robe. it. I have it in the closet. I have a fluffy hat and a robe with the three stripes. Okay. Oh, man. Let's go, Courtney. Let's go. Okay. So the, <laughs> the needs of the millennials have outpaced the wages. We have to teach a different path to wealth. I agree. Yeah, I, agree. Yeah. But I, I would just say this, right? That's happened for the boomers, for the Xers, and the millennials, and whatever else comes after them. Wage, we have not really had wage increases. So, but that didn't happen to the boomers. The boomers got, actually got all of the government programs, and they were actually able to use all of that stuff. Right, but so the late, that didn't happen to boomers. That happened late to boomers. Everybody after the late, the, boomers. the late boomers didn't get it. Those born in '65, they didn't get any of that. They missed a lot of that. So that's all I'm saying. He talking about his folks now, uh, Cora. But listen, what I am saying is this. <laughs> I mean, you, listen. You 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 threw the alley. You threw the alley. I had to dump the ball. I did. No, what I, I, did. Is, like, I, did. I think it's important to have the conversation because the thing is, like, when it comes to millennials, like a lot of times we're judging them based on things that don't even apply to them. It don't. And I think, and I, and yeah, I think I that's the problem. And I see it a lot of times, like you know, within the crypto space and like those conversations between boomers and millennials and and their feelings on even what crypto is versus what these. Like Courtney said, they created their own lane with the internet. 
right? But for the record, I, I always kind of take it for millennials, right? Because I think millennials are nothing but boomer remixes. Boomers, if you go back and you look, they did a lot of the same stuff. They got high, they partied, they didn't want to work a job. They did a lot of the same stuff. And now they just chat past I, mean, I, 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 I think I think extra started that because I, I can I can tell you my, my work history twisted, man. Like I, I was I don't mess around. Like if a job don't show me show me the money, they gotta show me the door. You gotta show me the money and show me the door. Like I'm not playing around. Like that don't make but any I'm just sense. Thinking about how judgmental we are with them, in, in, in terms right. of like having you know real conversations about what their needs are. All right. So Adrian says, "True and believe." As a Gen Xer, if I had an idea for a business, I'd be out of corporate America. I can't see doing nine to five until sixty five. Yeah. All right, Listen, so make it happen. Make it happen. They push that number back way back. So this is for say her name again, Malik. Safa. Safa. So this is the this is the cash app for Safa. And anybody that wants to help and contribute, I'll definitely be contributing. I contribute. Let's go. We got to support our folks. Ooh. Prayers for healing for your mom, Courtney. Absolutely. Thank you. My mom and grandma are cancer survivors. Oh, shout out to you, Adrian. Yeah, right. Survivors. All right, so um, pass the pass the new pass. It. pass it. If you run at seven streams, that's a trickle. Oh my God, I love this man. You will remain <laughs> thirsty. Building wealth takes focus. Maintaining wealth requires diversification, right? But you know, I try to have this conversation with some people, but the daggone MLM people got people brainwashed, man. Um, and they say it all the time. We need seven streams of income to become a millionaire. No. Like Corey said earlier, what like Courtney said earlier, they focused. So focus on the one, and then from the one will come many. Yeah. Right. So let me let me defend, let me defend MLMs for a second. And not that I'm in the MLM, not in any MLM, but MLM is like the greatest business school. I'll just put that out there. And this is coming from somebody who's went to business school and and, and, and studied in MLMs because in terms of like um just understanding sure. business, self help, um, public speaking, all those things you can learn in the MLM for a lot cheaper than you can. Um, to go get out of the way. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I don't think you're wrong. I think there's a lot of value that's presented, but I think it's kind of still tainted because it of is. Oh, the backdrop. But if you could just take out like kind of the really good parts, there was a mm-hmm. piece that they did from Darren Hardy. It was like a like a seven day like um, CD, and I was like, oh, this is pretty good. Mm-hmm. But again, I think you know it it does help because I think being a business owner. You can't just show up as an employee, you know, yeah. and I think that's something that a lot of people miss and out. I, and I'm just saying that just to defend a little bit, like, and, and I, that doesn't mean that I want your no need you, so I don't need your legal plans and none of that stuff. I'm just saying that there's value there. Um, the way Kamari tried it, it's like you know, slander the whole industry. It's value. I, I, I tell people real quick, right? If you don't know what you want to do, MLM is fine. But to me, MLM doesn't work if you know what you want to do. So, as a as a um, as an ex ACN member, um. Why are you ex? Shout the shout the team raw, you know, uh Rashina now. Oh, 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 real quick. Another central grant. But go ahead, Dan. Yeah, yeah, yeah. R- yeah, Rash Rasheen, Anwar, and Jamie, you know, Team Raw. All of them. All of them. Yeah, Two, for five, sure. Four. But go ahead. Nah, man, like I learned a lot of my sales skills from when I signed up from uh from AC. Yeah. I mean, a lot. All right. So Don Johnson gives an update on Harriet's. Her lace is up and looking for donations to find a new location. Okay, I'll definitely check it out. Um, Nokia produced a track, now DMX plus Drew Hill. <sighs> it's only four of them. So if half the, the half the group was involved, then it's Drew Hill. Like, I don't understand. And he I, said it. He said, now I'm effing with Drew Hill. He says it in the song. That's one of my jams. I that, know that song. But that's Thanks. not But that's not who's on the credits. So the, <laughs> you always give me the proper credits. Stop it. What? Yeah. Who? What? Who? What? We don't What's always on the credit? Have credit. Oh, that's not the uh, well, if, if ain't credit, it ain't happen. All right, so that yeah. that's it. it's up there, up, up on our site of Facebook, please. All right, cool. All right, who's seeing uh 2020 20 in the verses? Now we will see like make condition, make condition. That would be that'd be amazing, by the way. Yeah. Damn, Elizabeth, you too. You went on it, you went yeah, on it, man. <laughs> Damn, Elizabeth. you didn't clap from all kinds of angles. Damn, I, I just can't win. I think I'm just going to go to bed now, y'all, because I'm so old. I can't stay up this late. <laughs> um, Richard said, uh, if boomers had the same technology, they, yes, Richard, I totally agree. I totally agree. Because they was on the same type time. They didn't want nothing. 
Uh, all right, if you're going to create multiple streams, they must be symbiotic. Absolutely. A hairdresser selling bundles is complimentary. A hairdresser running a landscaping business. Not so <laughs> <laughs> I feel like, I, like Pastor Fact. Eubanks must be like tuning into my stuff. I say yes, this all the time. Yes. I say this all the time. I mean, find stuff that works on top of each other. I mean, even if you're like, I want to create an ebook. I don't want to see, if you're a hairdresser, I don't want to see your ebook on, you know, growing, I don't know, ivy or weed. I mean, you could do it, mm-hmm. I guess. Stop putting people not- in the box. That's Listen, just, hairdressers I- are the best weed sales people on the yeah. street. Or known to man. No, I'm sorry, that's talking from experience right now. But real quick, though, um, two things I want to say, Kamari. One is there's only one man alive, um, who will be like unbeatable in the verses, but we're not allowed to talk about him, so we're gonna leave that alone. And the second thing I want to say is, is the check, hey, 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 I'm not saying nothing. Second thing I want to say in is, the verses, nobody, verses. nobody alive, like Black yeah, alive. untouchable. There, there is nobody alive. I don't know if I agree with that. You talking about PP boy. He's on my PB boy. <laughs> yeah, there you. is no, there is no person alive that can bang with him in the verses. And I think I will, put, I will put Stevie Wonder. Up. I will put, I will put Stevie Wonder up against him. Ain't not the same kind of music, dog. Stevie Wonder from sixties and seventies, bro. Come on. Doesn't listen, mean he said no, nobody no, alive. Listen, listen. He said listen, nobody listen. alive. Let me say this though. Stevie to me is the greatest musician to ever breathe. Right? I'll say that. that I, that's my opinion. But twenty songs. I don't want to bring it up though. We're not allowed to talk about him. My other thing I want to tell you is. Other thing I want to tell you is, um, check the inbox. I put the flyer in there for you, so you can pull that up. Because I definitely think we got to talk about that for a second. But let's see there. I got you. I got you. All right. It's the vo- oh, that's why they're slandering me. It's the voice. Okay, I got it. Thank you, Adrian. Um. Oh, Adrian said that's a lie. Okay. Yeah, listen, now, listen, put your choice. Put your choice in there. Over, over that his catalog. I mean, his catalog crazy. He gonna go to Lionel Smokey. It's still, it's still that. Yeah, we're, you, not, you, we're, you, not, we're not allowed to talk about him. Uh, I, I will. I think there is somebody alive. Though. I'm not. So sure. Timberland. So for the record, Timberland said Chris Brown. He said nobody could touch Chris Brown. Yeah, I was about to say that. Elizabeth said my person. My Quincy. Quincy, yeah, yeah, Quincy, 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 you gotta put a producer with him. I don't think, listen, Quincy has been produced since, since, uh, I mean, before that, first of all, since Ray first of all you can, you can, you can play the mic songs, I get it, right? You can play the mic songs, but uh oh, like, no, I'm not the best. I'm not. I'm gonna sit in slanders about Chris. I'm saying I ain't trying to hear that Sinatra stuff. I'm just not trying to hear a Sinatra music. I just you don't, don't have to hear the Sinatra music though. You could just do his R and B catalog. Quincy R and B okay, catalog. Okay, go, go with his R and B catalog. Go with the man who shall not be named R and B catalog. Three of I'm I'm a, I'm 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 gonna say it's gonna be com- comparable. Okay, Quincy 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 on that level. Quincy's that dude. I know Quincy's that dude. I will never say anything about Quincy's Quincy's music. But I'm just telling when we talk about R and B. You talk about TP2, and you talk about, I don't want, I see, we can't talk about this. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Let's just move on. I said TP, not PP. I said TP. (laughs) All right, so listen, y'all, as we get away from PP, boy, we're going to talk about this. Um, No golden showers in here. PP2. Yo, wild up. All right, so Courtney, Jimmy, take it away. This that's isn't what I'm talking about. Go ahead, Courtney. This is this is Courtney's post that she put up uh, a while ago um, about income. So I'll let Courtney talk about this. I was I sent you something else, Kamari. So I mean, we were talking about the seven streams of income. We were talking about how I mean, Pastor Eubanks was coming through with the knowledge about um, all these different streams is that you kind of have to maximize them. So maximize your earned income and then diversify out or whatever you do. I mean, your business income then diversify out. So these are just I mean, we were talking about royalty income. You know. Everybody talks about rental income. I'm not a landlord. It stresses me out. <laughs> so I'm one of those. I'm one of those uh, millennials that Liz was talking about. So I'm like, yeah, that stresses me out. Um, but I'm all about dividend income and capital gains that come from stocks. So I mean, that's that's the overview. But no, but we do have a crypto course coming up next Saturday. Me, Jimmy, yeah. and Corey by the hood. The Ivy Investor Collabo. That's um, right. Our album drops May first. Hey, Stop. Elizabeth. None of them, when, when, when Step in the Name of Love come on, I believe I could fly. It's going to be a hard out for both of them dudes. You could put them together. But, Kamari, you could pull that uh, flyer up so we could talk. Uh, yeah, I, I got it. I got it. Y'all y'all doing a lot of backdoor production. Y'all real janky with it tonight. But, okay, we cool. 
Kamari, Kamari, you fired in the night too. I don't like being out here like with his gun too, shooting. Yeah, no reason. Listen, listen, it's all love. It's all. It love. is. It's, it's never been anything but love. That's so, all. That's right. And I just want to say that, you know, um, you know, it looks like we got an album coming out. So we're going to say that May 1st is when the album drops, the right? Fire mixtape. <laughs> that looks like, look like an amazing mixtape cover. But so we're going to have a cryptocurrency course coming out. Um, three ways for crypto.com. You can go and register. It's the Ivy Investor and Buy the Hood. And we're giving away everything like sites we use, C5, D5, NFTs. Um, you know, uh, Courtney's going to do an amazing job talking about picks and shovels plays within the space. So make sure you register. Um, and at, also, if you're not already, when you get this, this also gets you access to By the Hood University. And for those that are a member of By the Hood University, you guys already know how valuable it is. So make sure you share this with your folks that aren't there. But even if you are there, make sure you come too, because you get to um, you know, ask live questions and you know have a conversation with us. But this is going to be fun. It's going to be amazing. And if you pre-register, you get the special price because the price of a brick is going up as soon as it's over. Bottom line. Ooh, Adrian called us the three crypto foodies. <laughs> <laughs> Can I be Wyclef though? Like, you know what I'm saying? Like, you know, I'm not. I'm not. I'm not touching that. Tyrone. Tyrone is in the chat. I'm not touching. Oh that. no, I didn't mean it that way. I'm just talking, <laughs> talking about musically, man. By the way, did you know that? Did you know that um, Wyclef was um um he he played in that uh, what's his face song? I just saw it um on I think it was a uh, drink champs I was watching, and um the Rock Him uh, joint that he was actually playing the music in it um. Don't sweat the technique. He's oh, in really? the video too. That's him playing mm. the music. Doom, 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 doom. That yeah. Yeah, that, 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 that's crazy. That's actually Wyclef. He was like a little kid. He made that beat. Doom, da, doom, doom, doom. Okay. And, he, and, he, and, I, and you, if you, if you if you watch the video, you see him in there. He's in the video as a little kid, like playing that. I'm like, you know, damn Wyclef. He been getting talking about long. his his uh his his uh catalog because his yeah. catalog crazy too. It's fire. It's definitely fire. So Pastor Eubank says a lot of folks with jobs talk about becoming investors, but don't even contribute to their Ooh. 401k with a company, Matthew. Ooh. I love this brother on the road to success. I'm always start, always start where you are. I always start where you are. Man, but, listen. Go ahead, go ahead, go ahead, Jimmy. I'm just saying that was a bar right there because you don't know how many arguments I get in with folks. I'm like, yo, your job matches and you, you've been working there for 25 years and haven't like contributed one time. Like, that's a hundred percent. hundred percent on your money. You're getting a hundred percent on that money. Yep, man. And I know even, folks, if, I know even folks, if that money doesn't make any money, you just made a hundred percent. I'm not match. naming names. I'm not naming names, but I know folks that have worked at Johnson and Johnson for over thirty years and have never contributed, even though they get a match. And I'm like, yo, do you realize what J and J has done over that time time period? Well, listen, folks. Tonight's been a great show. I think that's a great place to end. Do me a favor, y'all. Everybody go register for the courts. Three ways. What is it? Three ways for crypto? Three ways for crypto.com. <laughs> Yo, Elizabeth, my bad. I didn't mean to bring the brother up. I was just making a, you know, a comment about the verses, but I see she, she don't like Yeah, she's spazzing <laughs> on Robert. Oh, God. That's funny, though. <laughs> so, all right. Listen, everybody. Make sure y'all go register for that. We will be back next week. Oh, don't forget to don't 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 forget to contribute to soccer. Yes. Go in the comments and get that cash tag and and contribute to soccer. Anything you can could help. Like you know, that's right. We need help, so that anything you can. All right, folks. We will see you next time. Have a great night. Bye bye. Peace and blessings. <laughs>